Hi everyone, this is GKCS. In this video, we'll be talking about asynchronous programming. If you're a front-end or a back-end engineer, it doesn't matter. Asynchronous programming is a core part of computer engineering. And the reason why it's so important is because every application that you write uh, has, if it is even slightly complex, has a set of background tasks that it has to do. So for example, if you are working in a pizza shop and you had to accept a pizza order, so at this time you accept the pizza order, but you don't necessarily need to start working on it immediately. There are already some pizzas which are in the oven, which are being cooked right now. Maybe you start preparing the toppings for this one. So there is a feeling of multiple things happening at the same time. And you not waiting for a task to complete or a response to come back before you move to the next one. And why is this important? Well, firstly, of course, one person can do a lot more. So this saves costs. Uh, it also uh, reduces the, let's say, technical footprint that you need. But even more importantly, customers love this. Customers don't want to be waiting in the line. You can just tell them that, hey, you can come back later and your order number is so and so. So that's exactly how you can think of a computer also saying that, okay, I'll work on this task later. And when I'm ready, I'm going to show you the result then. And this results in higher customer satisfaction. There's many studies on this. Amazon discovered that if you reduce your latency by 100 milliseconds, you actually increase revenue by 1%. 1% of Amazon's revenue is a lot of money. Google saw that if your search page takes 500 milliseconds to respond, users are 20% less likely to actually pick up that search result. 20% of your business blasted away in half a second because the user didn't really like the, the response time. So the more responsive you can make your pages, the better it is. There are two major ways in which you can make a program asynchronous. The first one is concurrency. So an example of this would be where you are taking an order from a customer and working on topics. By the time that the next customer arrives, you can go on working on your topics. But when the customer does come to your counter, you stop whatever you're doing and address the customer first. Okay. And when they have given their order, you say, okay, I'll get back to you in some time. They, they leave, you get back to the topics. So one thing is happening at one time. You're doing only one thing, but you're able to switch between tasks again and again. The second type of asynchronous programming is parallelism. Uh, here, it's pretty simple. Let's say instead of one counter, you have two counters or you have one counter, which is just dedicated to taking orders. And there is a person who just prepares pizza toppings. This is a little more expensive. As you see, the problem here is what if the person is not getting any orders or what if the pizza toppings are really fast to do? So you, you do them, but you're not busy. So you have these processes waiting, uh, which is a waste of time and resources. But the benefit of this is that while an order is being given, you can continue working on the pizza topics and you can have a mix of both of this concurrency and parallelism where you have two people taking orders in the counter and whenever they're getting time, they're able to work on the topics. So there is concurrency and there is also parallelism. Usually in the real world, you have a mix of concurrency and parallelism where you are able to get the maximum throughput, which is the maximum amount of work that can be done through a processor by having concurrent processes. And you also have parallelism so that uh, the latency is low and you might have some customers in India, some customers in the US. So you have a server for all the people in the US, which is running in parallel with the server in India. Now for some potential drawbacks, one of them is that if you have too much concurrency, where you have a huge bunch of threads, which are working on few tasks, then all that's going to happen is that there's going to be context switching from time to time. So a person is not able to work on a task long enough before the context switch costs them, right? So if you have many threads, especially the problem is you're trying to do many things at the same time. And all you're doing is moving from one place to another instead of actually doing the task. So this is called thrashing in operating systems. You have a thread or a bunch of threads, not able to do anything because all they're doing is getting preempted out. The second thing drawback is that if you have a lot of parallelism, you may be wasting resources. So the cost of this is of course high. Uh, and the third thing is developers find asynchronous programs harder to understand or manage. The problem is you're writing one piece of code and this code is running with parallel copies. So in some line of code over here, you might be changing a variable X equal to 10. And on another line of the same code, you may have the variable X being set to 20. Now, if both of them run in sequence, everything is fine but they could be running parallelly or concurrently. So they might overlap with each other. And the problem here is you don't know whether X will end up being 10 or 20. 
there are many language constructs which are created by languages like java golang uh, recently there have been improvements uh, in terms of rust rust has its own mutexes before you can actually take control of any variable uh, and scala uses just immutable objects so the idea here is that you have a lot of problems that programmers have to deal with uh, during debugging or maintaining code which is trying to be addressed by language constructs uh, but the benefit is so large the customers love low latency apps so much that it makes sense to do this some examples of concurrency as an engineer are going to be running some worker threads uh, in your chrome browser which are going to be doing background tasks this is not going to be you know taking up your main thread on the browser so the user has a more responsive web page to see another example on the server would be multiple parallel requests being sent to the database uh, maybe these requests are not related to each other you might be making multiple requests to let's say the database and also to another service and another one to a file system so this would be asynchronous programming where multiple things can happen together so that's all i have for asynchronous programming if you are an engineer it doesn't matter whether you are front end or back end you should definitely know about this subject until next time see you